Hello, hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, welcome. I'm Bonnie, Old Soul Mermaid. It has been a while since I've appeared on camera. That may be a good thing for many of you. I have been doing a little bit of traveling this summer and I also caught COVID. I think I may do a summer recap video at the end of the summer because I've been taking clips here and there. I'm not a vlogger, so I don't know how that video will turn out, but it's something I want to try to do because there's a reason for my traveling. But on to today's video, it's going to be kind of a two parter. Um, the second part, the latter part of the video, I'm going to share with you some fantastic finds that I found again at half price books. But the first part of this video is going to be sharing with you the results of my very first poll that I put on the community tab. And I wanted to thank you all of, all of you who participated and gave your input or at least voted and picked a little category. So those of you who missed the community poll, I asked the question of, do you think about how sustainably, ethically, or eco-consciously a deck is produced before you purchase it? About a year ago, I saw a fellow YouTuber who did a video, and I think her channel was called Stella Rain Dancer, and she changed the name of her channel, and I'll try to find that video, and I'll try to find the name of her channel and link it down below. But basically, in a nutshell, her video was about all the things as a practicing witch, she wasn't going to be purchasing anymore. Consumable items such as uh, plastic candle lighters and Palo Santo and white sage and certain crystals and how she was going, uh, I think in that video, she was talking about substitutes that she was going to use um, for her practice. And that video got me thinking about th some things that I could cut back on as far as like buying crystals and other things, you know, certain candles, certain things that I think are absolutely necessary for practice, but probably for someone like me who isn't a, a practicing witch, you know, may not be totally, totally necessary. So then you know, recently I was thinking I had a light bulb moment and I started thinking, you know, what about the production of decks? Many of us on Tarot Tube or who watch Tarot Tube tend to have, you know, more than five or six decks in our collection. So it got me thinking how Ego is collecting decks. Well, of course, we all know that you have to cut down a number of trees to make paper and decks are made from paper unless they are the plastic decks, which are made from plastic, which is made from petroleum. So let's, let's go back to the community poll and see what some of you thought about this, about this issue. Okay, under the question or the heading that I had, the question has never entered my mind. That was 30% of you. 64% uh, of you uh, clicked I wonder, but not enough to research before buying. And then 1% of you said, I only purchase secondhand decks or trade. And then 5% of you said, what the heck are you talking about? Uh, in the community, Moon Empath said, it has re never really crossed my mind, but now that it did, I would prefer eco-friendly made decks. However, I feel there's always going to be pros and cons of purchasing decks that are cardstock based and or plastic ones. And Julia, Julia M. Bada, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, said, yes, it's the reason I would not buy the plastic charm casting tarot. And I prefer decks with eco-friendly cardstock, even if they are often harder to shuffle. Now this is interesting because it's something I didn't even think about. I did back the recent plastic uh, charm casting 
uh, kit on Kickstarter, uh, which was uh, made by, and I can't remember her name. I'm sorry, I'm still foggy. Maybe I'll put it in here under a heading, but the creator of the metal cast, charm casting set, which I have, I bought her or backed her plastic charms because I thought they would be lighter and easier to cast. Mother Stoneheart said, I buy new, I buy used, I trade just as I do with books and it has not entered my mind. Juniper Wren said, my type of response isn't there, meaning it's it wasn't reflected in the poll. And uh, Juniper Wren says, I always think about it, but it won't deter me from purchasing a deck if it's one that I really, really want. So again, recapping, 30% of you says it it's not a consideration, it never enters your mind. 64% says you do wonder about it, but not enough to do the research you know, seeing if a certain deck is ethically produced. 1% of you do only purchase secondhand decks or trade. And then 5% of you are just like, what are you talking about? Okay, here's my take. I think of many collecting or purchasing and consuming habits that we can have. I don't think that deck collecting is one of the worst of them. If you don't throw away your decks when you're through with them. As we know, so many clothes, um, if you tend to purchase a lot of clothes, we know that so many items of clothing end up in our landfill. I don't think that's the case with uh, our tarot decks, whether they're plastic or if they're, you know, paper cardstock. I never heard of anybody just flat out throwing away their decks unless they're practically disintegrating from use or, um, I don't know, maybe in an estate sale kind of thing, you know, people have a lot of decks, um, something happens and they need to get rid of some decks quick. But I think decks have a better chance of finding a second home, a second life, as opposed to items of clothing and maybe some other things that we as humans tend to collect. If we use our decks and keep them and use them for, you know, a long time, uh, and then if we choose to pass them on, we can sell them or we can trade, trade them or donate them, um, there's a good chance that many of our decks that we send off have a good chance of finding a second home and a second life, as opposed to clothing where, you know, if you take a bunch of clothing to Goodwill, uh, there's some other videos I can link down in the description box below. If you donate to Goodwill or Salvation Army, most of those clothes are going to end up in a landfill. They're not going to be resold or repurchased from someone. There's one issue, though, that I want to bring up that I'm curious about as far as the production of decks. The inks that are used. How eco-friendly are they? How poisonous are they? Are they poisoning so, uh, some waterways like they do in uh, certain parts of the world where they produce our fashion? And there is a joke, a kind of a dark joke in the fashion industry is like, you want to know the colors for the season? Look at the rivers in China and then you will find the season's color palette. I do know that there are some indie creators that are conscious about this and who use um, ethical inks and I'm thinking of the creator of the Oak, Ash, and Thorn tarot deck. I personally don't have that deck, but I remember hearing or reading about the eco-conscious methods of um, inks produced for that deck and let me know in, in the description box below if I'm correct. And there are others. I think I have a deck by uh, Mandy Peterson and she's produced a couple of decks. 
Um, she also uses eco-conscious inks that are non-poisonous to the environment. I think it's probably more the indie creators that are more conscious about how their decks are produced, even though they have um, the least resources. I really want to know, and it's something I would like to research, how mass market decks are produced. And I would be willing to bet, though I don't know the answer to this, that maybe their practices, if you go to the the bigger companies that produce the mass market decks, they are probably going to be the least eco-conscious. I don't know, if you personally have any insight to the production practices of say a US Games, a Red Feather, a Llewellyn, if you know that they produce their decks in the most eco-conscious way possible, let me know. And also in the description box below, if you know of any other decks that you have purchased in your collection where the creator has used eco-conscious practices in producing their deck, put down the name of the deck and the creator because so we can all know and we can all have that resource here, right here down below. Because I would like to know because I would like to support those creators. This part of the video is not meant to be a preachy video. Um, it's just kind of to spark a conversation, maybe to bring a little bit of awareness. This part of the video is mainly done for myself because it's something I've been wondering about. And I'm thinking if I'm wondering about it, maybe one or two of you are as well. You know, a lot of what's happening to the planet, a lot of the conversation goes to what we are doing as consumers. But in all reality, the biggest culprits are corporations and their efforts to make the most amount of profit regardless of the cost to humans and the planet. But that's not to say that we have no responsibility as a consumer. We can vote with our dollars. We can ask questions just to make sure that the things that we purchase have an extended or long life. And when we're ready to pass them on, that we find a way that they can have a second life. That's all. Okay, now we're gonna get to the fun because I was recently at Half Price Books again and I found some jewels. So let's head on over to the table and I'll show you what they are. So before we head on over to my table, I want to let you know that I did spend a pretty penny at Half Price Books with the things that I found. Um, now I did sell a bunch of patterns. As you can see, I do sort of collect patterns. Well, I use them and I collect them. And I noticed that my pattern collection was getting a little bit too unmanageable for my liking. You know, I have my allotted space for things and I don't like a lot of overflow. So it's going to be kind of a one in one out but I have sold a good portion of my pattern collection. On eBay and Destashify, these patterns here are waiting to be packaged up and sent off. And there's some over here. This is my supply closet for sewing and art supplies. Yeah, I know it's a mess. Actually, I did straighten it up, but I'm getting rid of this, some things, but yeah, I sell my patterns. Some of them are out of print and like tarot decks, they are in demand. So, um, once I spent my allotted budget, I had this money to rely on selling my patterns. So here is my bag and some books I've acquired from Half Price Books and we're just going to get on into it. So I'm going to move these aside and we're just going to pick out things randomly one by one. The 
first deck I acquired and I found in the tarot cabinet was the Venetian Lenormand. And I can't pronounce these names. Elsa, and it's a Eastern European or Russian name, and Eugene Vininsky. And I know there's a, a Venetian or a Golden Venetian Tarot. And I missed out on both the Tarot and the Lenormand. I know they were Kickstarters, but I think at the time I had I had backed some other Kickstarters early in my tarot journey, or I had spent too much, spent over my my monthly budget, and I had to pass on them. And they were also on the pricey side, if I remember correctly. Let me know in the comments below if that was your experience. But I found it at Half Price Books, the Lenormand deck, for $30. Dollars and I haven't. I checked quickly on eBay, and I haven't. I haven't been able to find it. This is a beautiful set with a hard-bound book. Look at how beautiful this is. And there are pictures in here, though not color pictures, but it looks like you get a good amount of information. And I was thrilled to get this because currently, right now, I'm. I'm plowing through, not really plowing through, I mean going really slowly through Rana George's Lenormand book and it is wonderful. So Lenormand is a system that I'm really attracted to and I would love to get really proficient. Mostly I pull no more, you know, five, maybe nine if I'm getting adventurous, but usually it's like three cards in addition to my morning tarot pull. But it's a system I really, really want to get proficient in. Oh my gosh, this book. A beautiful hardback book. And look, created in Geneva, Switzerland. So very nice quality. And look at this, this um, beautiful gold foil box. Thumb cutouts. Look at the inside of that. And here's a certificate of authenticity. And this was copy number 72 of 600. So this, this is really, really a great find. Yeah, uh, author's edition, Geneva 2019. And that's the back of that. And the inside of the box. Look at these beautiful backs. Um, this is a glossy, light glossy cardstock and the cards are edged. Now these cards are larger than standard Lenormand size. As you can see for my hand, you know, a, a regular Lenormand card is much smaller than that. A um, more playing card or bridge size. Um, beautiful illustrations, very intricate, beautiful. Kind of reminds me of the Chiro Marchetti uh, Lenormand deck that you can get for much cheaper because it's a mass market deck, but this is beautiful. Now, the one thing though, I can see why it was from my memory a little more um, pricey was, well, it's an indie deck, but also there are a bunch of extra cards and I will show you those in just a second. So you have the standard 36 cards and you can see how beautiful the artwork is. And these backs, I love, love, love these backs. You get the card, the playing card association. Oh, just magical. I mean, you feel like you want to walk right into the, into the card and into these settings. I mean, look at that garden. So beautiful. Let me quickly show you the extra cards. So in Lenormand, if you don't know, Lenormand, a standard Lenormand deck is 36 cards. Sometimes uh, deck creators will give you an extra man or woman card or a gender neutral card um, some or extra some extra um, options for some of the cards. But here in this deck, you get some extra cards, kind of like the um, fortune telling decks that are out in the market. And I have to delve into the book and see the meanings of these cards because, you know, I see 
kind of a banquet table or a dessert table and I don't know. Why don't we take a look at the book? Oh my gosh, light bulb moment. All right, so we have card 41 here. Because there's no titles on it and there are no titles on any of the of the standard Lenormand cards. They're just numbered. This is called the luxury card. The collection of the objects we can see in the luxury card of golden Venetian Lenormand is fascinating. Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, and Indian articles standing on a table covered with a sumptuous oriental carpet. Maybe it should be said Asian carpet would be better. Can be considered a collection of rare things. But where in Venice this array of luxury items would be appropriate in the middle of the last millennium? In those days, Venetian merchant ships and expeditions reached the most exotic countries. So there's a history about it. So let's see. So it, it tells you in the book what it means for events. Receiving a luxurious present, possessing exquisite things, collecting foreign articles, developing a good taste, visiting an exhibition, making use of other people's abilities and skills for little money. And then in the book, it goes, if you get this for a business inquiry, finances, relations, recommendations, and in some combinations. So yeah, the book, you really need the book because you would look at this and unless you're planning on reading it purely intuitively, you would not know what this means. So you can see, let me bring this back over to the middle, how just luxurious and luscious these images are. And I do think that the glossy cardstock, the glossy finish really helps enhance this, kind of like, you know, Chiro Marchetti's decks. So you can see it will go all the way up to 52. And then we have a couple of Joker cards here. Really, really stunning deck. And now I see why um, from memory the, the Kickstarter was a little bit more than I was used to for a Lenormand deck. It really, really comes with a lot of cards in this beautiful hardback book beautiful production values. Okay, but we have so many more decks. I, You really need to grab a snack or a drink because I have a lot to show you. All right, you guys, this is a deck that has eluded me. This deck had come and gone about the time I started my tarot journey. It took a while before I became aware of its existence. And once I did, you know, you had to pay big bucks on eBay for it. It is the Connected and Free Oracle by Inner Hue. I can't, when I saw this in the ca cabinet, I had to like blink my eyes and do a double take. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Uh, you could see right here, the price that they had for the book in excellent condition and the deck in really, really good condition. There's nowhere on this box. $55, and I know it's going for a lot more on eBay. This is also known as the Alchemist Oracle, and I am thrilled. This is just a standard craft paper, you know, two-piece box, but it's in really good condition. And I'm I know of the Inner Hue deck, um, the Tarot deck, there's been two or three editions. I don't know if there's mu multiple editions of um, the Oracle deck. Let me know in the, in the comments box below if you know. But you see, we've got chakra cards and I've gone through all these decks to make sure that they're um, complete. But I love this type of art for my oracles. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of the my favorite Roots and Wings. Um, kind of along the same vein, similar aesthetic, similar feel, but again, different enough. And this is also, you know, a chunky monkey deck. Um, I'm really excited to look at the 
guidebook because, you know, it does say it's the Alchemist's Oracle. So I want to see what all that's about. Um, this is a little bit bigger than standard tarot size, or maybe it's standard tarot size. There's, there's my little hand. But every time I see this deck on YouTube, I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm just really, really bummed that I missed out on it. And I thought that this deck was forever, forever going to elude me. And alas, you know, sometimes miracles do happen. I have a few other decks, you know, that, that are on my wish list that I know I'm probably never going to get. Maybe I should do a video on that. But, and this was going to be on the list. You know, I had been thinking about doing a video of that, but I got it. I got it. And I can't believe it. I think somebody decided to dump their, their tarot collection uh, the day that I went in. Yeah, so I think one or two people decided to, to dump their collections. And that happens, you know. Situations change. Needs change. And sometimes we have to let go of some of our, our beloved decks, but, and we outgrow them. Sometimes they no longer suit our needs. But the great thing about getting them second hands, you know, somebody's, I'm not gonna call decks trash, but that old adage, one man's tra trash is another man's treasure or a woman's treasure. And this is certainly the case. You know, what doesn't serve somebody um, now is, delighting me and that's what's so great about finding decks secondhand and what's so great about tarot decks and why I think you know decks are not completely an unsustainable you know collecting habit even if that's all you're going to do is just collect them and not really use them uh because you can sell them there is a market a secondhand market to give them a second life where somebody's going to enjoy them and use them and love them and they're not going to end up in a landfill. And as you can see, I mean, what is the chances of me finding the guidebook with it? You know, it was sold together and it, it's, it's in perfect condition. No browning, no cigarette smoke. It's basically uncreased. So this person hasn't broken the spine of the of the guidebook. So I'm so, so happy. All right, on to the next deck. And look what we have here. We have a brand new, still in shrink wrap, copy of the Ancestral Oracle of the Celts by Caitlin Matthews, illustrated by Will King. King Hen. Um, this is not a very old deck. It's it's come out in the last year or two, and you can see they priced it at $9.99 uh, with the suggested list price of $21.95. And I think that's a, in the ballpark of what you can get this on Amazon for. Maybe a little cheaper on Amazon. Yes, uh, $21.95 US, $16.99 pounds UK, $24.95 Canadian. So I'm going to open this and we're going to take a look. But usually you'll see some brand new decks at Half Price Books. And you'll there's a bunch of these. Several of my locations have a bunch of these right now. And I think it's because there could be a flaw in the deck somewhere uh, under close examination. It could be overstock. I have bought brand new decks and have noticed minor flaws like in the numbering of the cards. So you have to be aware of that if you buy a brand new deck like this at Half Price Books, if you see a lot of them, you know, like they got it from the manufacturer, it was an overstock um, or something, there's a flaw in the batch and so they can't sell it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or another mass market retailer and as i'm opening this if you have this deck let me know if you notice any differences in the packaging uh, the cards are a little bit out but this is what how they come packaged i'm gonna slip this opened and does this look if you have this deck let me know if this is your backing 
Now it's a little bit smaller than traditional Oracle size. You can see my small hand there. It's uh, a glossy cardstock. It's got a nice um, Celtic pattern imprinted here, but it's, it's very, very basic. And that's the side. And so it looks like we have some landscape cards in this deck and they are sticking together. Let's see if I can just kind of crack it a little bit so they don't stick. I really don't know much about this deck, um, but it looked very, very interesting to me. Yeah, are they all, all landscaped? Very, very interesting. Now, we have some portrait cards. So it looks like this may be a system. You can see there's a fairly, you know, large border of green. It's a pretty green, but it looks like this may be a deck that has suits because I see other colored borders here. So see, we've got orange. And again, I have not researched this deck. Um, I know I knew of it of its existence, but it wasn't something that you know I I was looking out for. But since it was a half price book, see again we switch um, the border. Since it was a half price books, I figured why not? Why not? And here we go. We have another um, another suit, and I think these are supposed to be divided up into the suits. So let me know your experience um, working with this deck. Now it does come with a very, you know, a good sized guidebook. So it looks like this deck was first published as using the Celtic Wisdom Oracle in 2011. And this is a 2019 version of this deck now. So it's kind of been reimagined. You get a good table of contents, how to use the deck and the meanings, and you get an inter good introduction. So this, yeah, this is really good. And you've, you've got the, um, the card, a photo of the card, so you could read the book in bed and you don't have to have the deck. Very interesting. Again, something not in my wheelhouse, but I found it interesting. And uh, something I'm gonna have fun looking looking at. And there's some rituals and spreads. Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah, let me know what your experience is working with this deck. And if you noticed any differences um, while I was just kind of quickly flipping through the cards. The next deck that I was lucky enough to find was the Guided Hand Tarot by Irene Mudd. And you can see I paid $30 for it, which this deck is not an out of print deck. It's still available on Etsy, but there was at one point a full paged um, large guidebook, which you know, I've missed out on. That is not available anymore. And I had gone back and forth with this deck for, you know, a year. Um, but I, the reason why I held off is because I have so many beautiful collage art decks. I didn't know if this was a deck that was going to be left by the wayside, you know, because I have my favorites and I didn't know where this one was going to fit in. But you notice that the price, $30, is not, I think you can get the deck for $45 plus shipping on Etsy. Now, I will say with this purchase, my big mega purchase, I had a 10% coupon from Half Price Books. Every January they give, um, if you pay, if you spend $25, you get a calendar with a coupon for every month. And I had one of those coupons. So I got 10% off my entire purchase. So take that into account. And this box is a little bit dinged right here. And I was going, for a moment, I'm being honest, I was thinking, oh my gosh, maybe I should take it back um, and get a shiny new one. But then I was thinking, no, 
Um, and I was a little bit conflicted because yes, buying the deck brand new would help support the creator. But at the, at, on the other hand, I am keeping this deck from going into the landfill. I'm giving it a second home, a second life, which is also a good thing. So the, the box is a little bit dinged up, but nothing too, you know, it's creased, it was bent, but nothing too bad. I don't have the full page guidebook, but that's not available anymore. You know, I, you snooze, you lose sometimes on some of these things. It does come with the pullout, you know, with just very cursory uh, card meanings right here, but that's good. And those are the beautiful backs. The deck itself, you can see it, it's not been used. There's no bow or bend. It's in perfect condition, no cigarette smoke, which is like a no-go for me. Um, this is like good make, standard make playing cards, card stock. And I'm just gonna flip through some of the cards for those of you who are not familiar with this deck. But it is a beautiful collage art deck. And that is the last Tsar of Russia, Tsar Nicholas II. Actually, he looks a lot like his cousin, King George V of England. Uh, that would be the current uh, queen, Queen Elizabeth's grandfather. He looked a lot like this because the two cousins looked a lot alike. You can see there's some diversity here and some really great takes on the cards. Again, and I love this hermit. Love, love, love this hermit. With this 1950s, or I would say that's 1950s image. A kid with his little uh, 45s and turntable. But you can see for a collage art deck, there is a little bit of diversity in here and it is so beautiful. I I don't know why I went back and forth on this deck. You know, I would have loved it and it could have been a, a thing of finances and what I was backing at the time, but uh, I'm gonna love this deck. I know I am. I love all my collage decks. I just, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed. Maybe I should try to find uh, the guidebook somewhere. Maybe it'll show up at Half Price Books. You never know. I've been lucky. But this is the Guided Hand Tarot by Irene Mudd. And I'm very, very happy to have found it secondhand to give it a home where it will be loved. The next wonderful find is the Lily White Tarot by Celia Melsville. Um, this deck has been on my wish list for ages, for ages, for ages. And you know, it just because it's still there on the website, it's not out of print. You know, there's always, you know, the new thing on Kickstarter or whatever. And I've held off, but I love the artwork on this deck. Now you'll see the price is $60. And if you go on the website, I think it's running for about that. Plus you have to pay shipping, but shipping isn't too bad. I think it's like $8. So I didn't really save that much, you would think. But this is signed by the creator and it is a premiere first edition um, from 2018. So I don't know how it differs from the decks that are you know, around now, what she's selling on her website now. Um, if there's been any changes to the cards, I don't know. Let me know if you do know in the comments below. Um, this deck is in pretty much pristine condition, except for a little, you know, kind of, you know, crushing at this little corner, but you sometimes it happens in shipping when you get it. So that's what could have happened to this deck. Um, I did put it in order, and this deck doesn't come with a Chunky Monkey guidebook, just some a little pullout for meanings. But I did realize on the site that they do have a guidebook in English, which was only a, 
originally available in French, so I am definitely going to be buying that from the creator's website, um, you know, to support her. Now, buying the deck secondhand, you don't support the creator um, right off the bat, but you keep the deck from going into a landfill, you give it a second home and second life. And my decks, when I'm done using them, if I, you know, they've served their purpose, I wouldn't dream of throwing them in the landfill. They're going to go to half price books or I'm going to give them away. Um, some of them may go on eBay. It depends. But uh, yeah, I I am so, so thrilled. I mean, the cardstock, there's... There's no bow in the deck. You can see it's in pristine condition. So I am very, very happy with this find. And I'm just flipping through a few of the cards. In case you're new to my channel, in case you are new to tarot and these decks, this deck is still available um, on the creator's website. This is the Lily White Tarot. And, uh, oh... I think this is so, so beautiful. So beautiful. I would say that this deck and this artwork has very watery kind of energy, which is, you know, that's me. Um, with the watercolor and, and, and the very gentle artwork. Um, so that's why I'm drawn to this deck. All right, you guys, I, I could just look at these cards forever, but we have some more decks. We do some great ones. All right. Now the next great find is the White Sage Tarot by Teresa Hutch. And you're going to say, that's not such a unique find. That's available. Um, you can get it off of Amazon. It's a mass market deck. Yes and no. I do have the mass market deck that comes in a tin, but this, I believe, is the original Kickstarter deck, the deck that was available on Kickstarter or available independently. This is full tarot size, and I got this for $19.99, which is the price of the, the mass market deck in the tin. This is a glossy box, two-piece box, and that's the back of it. That comes with the little, you know, just a little book. Very, very simple little white book. But the cards are standard tarot size. As you can see here, actually they're a little bit taller than the standard RWS. But yeah, borderless as the mass market one is. And it just has that bottom border with, with the title. But I love this deck. It is a pip deck, um, but it's a pip deck that I find I don't have trouble using. And um, I am thrilled to have these beautiful, gentle images in a larger size. Now, I do love decks in a tin and small decks for larger spreads. But because, I mean, look, I can see my beloved sloth in a larger size. I can see more details in that cute, sweet little face. I love sloths. But you can see the beautiful artwork in this larger deck. And I love the cardstock. It's really good cardstock. And I am thrilled to have this deck in a large size. Okay, moving on. I have a couple of more decks to show you, but I want to move on to some books and uh, that I found some great things. This is a coloring book called Salty Bitches, Vintage Ladies Talking Trash. Um, vintage Shade Adult Coloring Book. I got it for $3.99. You can't beat that, but the images in here just started cracking me up. Yeah, no. Time to do some soul crushing. And I think these little captions fit so perfectly with the images. No bra club. And I'm just going to have so much fun coloring these images in. Bad bitch number one. I mean, this is so funny. Haters going to hate. 
Hold on, let me overthink this. Yeah, this is just, I bought this for fun. It was $3.99 plus 10% off. <laughs> and yeah, hot mess. I thought this was hilarious and a great find and it hasn't been colored in. It's like in brand new condition. Next, I found a Japanese pattern sewing book, uh, Nanny Iro Sewing. Now, Nanny Iro puts out this beautiful Japanese fabrics, which I have bought. Uh, they're, they're double gauze and they're linen cottons. They're, it's quite, the fabric is quite pricey, but you can see that they're wearing it here. It is beautiful fabric. And I love Japanese design clothes. And you can see they're all very basic and comfortable. And I love this style of clothing, especially for where I live, where it's hot. I love linen. I love um, cotton, organic cotton fabrics. Double gauze is a favorite, but you can see right here, these are the patterns that you're gonna get in the book and you can see examples of this you know it's like when you're living i mean this summer in texas we've had most of our summer i mean too much straight being over 100 degrees hitting 106 108 most of the time um today is a, as i'm filming is going to be 103 but i think we're going to get back down into the 90s going forward for the next week which is I mean, to a lot of you in different parts of the country, you're going to say, oh my gosh, how can you live there? And yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's trade-offs, you know? You want the hell heat in the summer, or do you want to deal with brutal winters? And I can't do brutal winters. I think I'm going to make this skirt. Oh, yes. I'm going to definitely be making that skirt. It's totally my aesthetic. It's what I love. This is a cute duster jacket too. And these are not difficult designs. These are great designs, simple if you're a beginner sewist. And it goes over fabric swatches. Oh, I love this. I've seen this um, for sale in different um, fabric shops. It's beautiful. But yeah. And you get the sizes, the sizing how to prepare your fabric. And here are the sewing instructions. And I am thrilled to find this because yeah, there's several patterns in here that I want to make. Next, I have a coloring book by the renowned coloring book artist, Maria Trolle, and this is Nightfall. And finding this book in perfect, pristine, new, uncolored in condition for $7.49, it's about I think these go for about $12 or $13 on Amazon right now. Um, I have completed my collection. I now have all the coloring books by Maria Trolle. And for those of you who are coloring book enthusiasts, and look! Oh yes! Um, by the tarot section of Half Price Books that I was in, they had these loose tarot cards, probably from incomplete decks that people brought in. And they just put them in a box and you could take some. And I brought, I took these two for bookmarks. And I don't know what deck it's from. Let me know in the comments below if you know what deck these are from. Uh, from. These are the backs. It looks like an oracle card. No, no, it's a tarot, tarot deck. I have no idea. So let me know. Um, so I took them for bookmarks because I love using these type of things for bookmarks. So this is, these are the illustrations in this book. Some of it has um, black background pages, which I like because you don't have to worry about coloring the background. <laughs> For those of us who are background challenged, I'm, I'm still very much a novice at coloring. I'm not good. Some of you have, may have seen my, my feeble attempts, but it doesn't matter. I have seen improvement in my techniques and I enjoy it. So that's all that matters. But I am so thrilled. Look, perfect condition, unbroken spine, uncolored in. I got a discount, you know, an extra 10% off with my coupon. And I've completed my Maria Trolle uh, collection. 
So what more can you ask for? Okay, we have kind of what I think is a nifty little find. Some of you might not be wowed by it, but I am. And this is the original Luna Soul Tarot. Now, the mass market edition, the current edition from Liminal 11 with the, the flap, the bottom opening box, I have that. I do have that. But I always kind of um, was wondering about the original edition. And you can see this one came with no booklet, but I got it for $13.48, which is much, you know, I think the edition that is out now you get for 22 bucks. And it comes in this wonderful bag. I don't know if it originally came in this bag or the person who owned it put it in this bag, but I got a free bag. It's a velvet, velveteen bag, and um, oop, I'm going to have to fight a little bit to get it out, but it comes in the, the tuck box that this originally came in. Now, the tuck box is a little bit beat up, so I may take this out, the deck out of the tuck box, and store this tuck box safely, but... Um, here is the deck, and I was always, always um, curious about the difference. Okay, so I compared this with my newer version, the deck that you can get now. And basically, the images are all the same. The font has stayed the same. The backs have changed in that there is no longer a border and this original version has a border and the cardstock is different. Now I'm gonna pull over my newer edition and this is the one that comes in the flip bottom box. Um, the cardstock is very, very different. This has, the newer version has um, a more matte more papery feel it's thicker whereas this the original version i think in my opinion is a lot more usable as far as shuffling especially if you're a riffle shuffler and you have smaller hands that's why i'm so happy to get this deck um i love the feeling of this card stock now if we put it on the sides Look at how much more chunky the newer version is as opposed to the original edition. Um, and just, I guess we're gonna do a mini, mini side, side by side comparison, but you can see, just so you can see the color saturation. Um, yeah, it's a little bit different, but it's nothing, I'd say, the newer one has deeper color saturation, but it's nothing too too noticeable, really. And the and the font has stayed the same. There is a small border which they kept um, in the newer edition. It's basically you know the backs that have changed, and the cardstock and the packaging. Now I love this deck. I really really love this deck. I find it to be a great general reader. And yeah, this cardstock is a lot easier to handle for problematic small hands than the newer one is. Um, but that's not to mean that I can't manage the newer cardstock. But I was super, super curious when I saw this and looked at it. I'm going, I already have the newer edition. Do I really, really need this? But it was $13. Um, but it was cheaper than what the newer one costs now. And I think, you know, um, it would be a good copy to have, especially if I develop problematic, I mean, really, you know, if I became arthritic or I'm not planning on it, but you know, yeah, I'm happy to have it. So I'm coming back here because I just had a light bulb moment to why this was so cheap. At $13.48, I think whoever bought this, their buyer at the buyer counter, was checking prices and they found this mass market deck. And I think they saw this not realizing that this is an out of print 
addition. You can't get this, you know, easily anymore. And what they saw was this, and they were pricing this at half of what this is suggested at. You know, if this is going, do we have a suggested price on here? Okay, so yeah, um, US 24, $24.95 US. So I think they were pr pricing this at roughly half of what this is. Um, that's just my my thinking um, because it is half price books so they um it depends when they price things especially the tarot not all their their the people at their buy counters not all of the buyers know tarot so they don't know what they're getting so that's why you know i've had some really good luck <laughs> okay that's what i think let me know what you think in the comments below we have one more book and one more tarot deck. We're almost there. I found this Rachel Pollock book, Tarot for Magical Times, for $8.99. And it's published by US Games. This book first came out, oh, well, let's see. The copyright is 2011. Let me know if you have this book. It goes into some of the history of tarot and it goes into all the cards. It goes into the Major Arcana. This is a great research book, learning tool if you are beginning in tarot. Let's see. New Life Blossoms in the Ruins. Yeah, a great resource book. Um, it looks like Rachel Pollock collaborated with a Johannes Feiberg or Feibig. I know I'm mispronouncing that, but this looks like a really great, you know, little concise resource, you know, just a small book that you can carry with you instead of, you know, the big academic books. And sometimes it's good to have a concise book. This looks really great. And you know, Rachel Pollock, so you know you can't go wrong, so I picked it up. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you have this book and what your experience with this book has been. All right, you guys, we have one deck left. Now this isn't it, obviously. But this deck, again, like the Connected and Free Oracle, I thought was forever going to elude me. Now, the deck I'm about to pull out, I discovered it before, but really fell in love with the images because the images are in the 2021 Biddy Tarot Planner, which I used last year. It kind of got me into the habit, really solidified my habit of daily tarot reads and card pulls and journaling. And the images for this deck can be found in this book. Um, or in this tarot journal, which I was using all through 2021. And I was, you know, really disappointed. It's one of those things where you're just bummed, you know, you're not gonna get the deck. Cause I saw this deck going at one time for $800, $900. I think it's less now. And it is, and that is the Lumina Tarot by Inner Hue, who also put out the Connected and Free Oracle. Now, when I saw this stack sitting in the cabinet, I again, I did a double take. I could not believe what I was seeing. And it was not sitting next to the Connected and Free. That was in another cabinet. And I think the same person probably sold the decks in, probably it makes sense, you know, to surmise that the same owner had both decks. Um, but this book is in perfect condition. It did not come with that. I think it originally came in a big box, but from what I can glean, um, those boxes were very flimsy. Let me know in the comments if you know that. I don't think this is, this is definitely from the artwork, not a first edition. It's maybe second or third. I think there was three editions, but it's definitely not the first. And I think on eBay, these are going, well, I know the first editions were going for 800 bucks. 
Um, I think now they've come down to maybe a couple hundred bucks. But yeah, the, the spine hasn't been cracked on the book. The deck comes in the bag with the title card and the beautiful deck and images. This is one of my unicorn decks. I, I just could not believe it. Could not believe that I found it and that it was sitting in a cabinet at half price books. Again, this deck feels very dreamy and watery to me, which is me. I am a Pisces girl with a lot of water in her chart. And I did have my chart done, and I will have to share that with you all um, at some point. I've been meaning to do it. I just haven't gotten around to it. Let me know if you'd like to know what my chart consists of. When I was watching videos about this deck some people were complaining about the cardstock i think the cardstock is fine i think it feels really good in the hand it's satiny smooth i love it and i am beyond thrilled i think this has i'm drawn to this and the lily white because they have a similar energy but they're different enough i think that i'll pull them out you know at different times but you know, you can see they have a similar energy that I'm drawn to, a similar aesthetic, kind of soft, kind of dreamy, the same way, you know, I'm attracted to vintage collage art decks. Um, that's what I like. I don't, for the most part, like anything ugly or jarring. I'm not, I shouldn't say ugly, I mean harsh. I do have some harsh, um, some decks with more harsh confronting artwork but that's not I have them for specific purposes but that's not the bulk of my collection and in this deck you can see it's pretty pippish but um, I think they're done well and I won't have any problems reading with it um, let me know if you still have this deck in your collection are you still reading with it what your experience has been. What edition do you think I have? Is it a second or third? I think I'm right in saying that there were three editions and then, oh, I do want to say that this deck is coming out mass market. And I just realized that when I was doing my research on this deck, you can pre-order it off of Amazon now. And it has a March of 2023, I believe, release date. And I did pre-order it because, um, you know, I want to compare and it's going to be at a, I can't remember what it's priced at, but you know, it's something very economical. So if you are also feeling that you missed out on this deck, don't despair and don't fear because it is coming out mass market in March of next year. Uh, I haven't been able to find anything out about the Connected and Free Oracle, and I'm hoping that maybe that will come out mass market as well. So, um, yeah, I will try to remember to leave a link, the Amazon link to that pre-order, in case, you know, you're despairing because you also missed out on this deck as well. But yeah, I want to know all your experiences and all your thoughts. Do you still have and use this deck? And, um, yeah. I am very, very grateful to have found it. I'm so, so happy. Oh, look at that little face. All right. So I want to know all your thoughts about sustainability in deck collecting. And if it's something you haven't thought about before, will you think a little bit about it now? Maybe, you know, quite honestly, with these two decks, I don't, think I got, you know, price-wise, I did get a little bit of a deal. Um, and I was tempted, especially for the guided hand tarot, to say, you know, I'm on a, a shiny new deck because I was a little bit perturbed. I'm like this, okay, about the condition of the box. You know, I want it nice and shiny and not bent. But I'm like, no, get over it. You are saving this deck that is in otherwise perfect condition 
you're giving it a second home, you're giving it a second life. And that is a good thing, though I'm not if I were going to purchase it brand new from the creator's website or Etsy shop, I would be, you know, supporting her directly, but this is good too. And the same thing with the Lily White. Um, though this I think might be a little bit more special because it has, it is a first edition. I don't know, but it has a little dent, but I, I did save myself a little bit of money, not a ton of money, but the key here is that I, I'm giving it a second home and a second life and it's gonna be used. And these things are not gonna end up in a landfill. Again, the same with these books that I have acquired, they're gonna get used. All in all, I don't think that deck collecting is the worst um collecting habit that you can have. I do worry about the inks that are used in, in the process of, you know, printing the decks. But the fact, if you keep them in your collection and use them for a long time, or if you make sure that they don't end up in a landfill, either by giving them away, selling them, um, donating them to a charity shop, um, somebody's going to find them and appreciate them and give them a second home and extend their life. Unlike a lot of our clothes that we buy in shops at fast fashion shops, um, I think it's a little bit more sustainable because we tend to hold on to our decks longer. We actually use them. Uh, we use them longer. So I think as far as a collecting habit, it's a little bit better on, on, on that scale. But I want to know your thoughts. Okay, I think I've held you hostage for long enough. And um, just a reminder, if you found this video fun, if you liked going through my finds, please consider hitting a like, a subscribe, commenting below, hitting that notification bell. It helps oh, people find my channel, and right now the algorithm gods are not pleased with me. So <laughs> with that, I will leave you to get on to your beautiful day. Bye for now.